There is a mystery unfolding in outer space as we speak. We have a name for this mystery, we call it 3i Atlas, but that doesn't mean we actually know what it is or what it's doing. 3i Atlas is weird. It looks weird, it moves weird, it's made of weird stuff, and for all of the time that we've spent studying this object, there is a new indication that it might have actually been studying us for even longer. Let's begin with some recent images of 3i Atlas that were captured by astrophotographers in the remote desert of Namibia on the southern tip of Africa. This is already an incredibly dark place on Earth, but the photographers were able to take advantage of a lunar eclipse where the shadow of the Earth blocked out any sunlight from reflecting off the moon, essentially creating the darkest sky possible and therefore the clearest view into outer space. During this time, they could have pointed their cameras at anything, but they chose to locate 3i Atlas in their viewfinder, and what they saw was shocking. The object was glowing bright green in the night sky. Now based on what we know about 3i Atlas, it should not be turning green, or at least there is no natural explanation right now for it to be green. You see, the prevailing theory among scientists and astronomers is that 3i Atlas is an interstellar comet, meaning it's generally the same as all of the other comets we see flying around. It has a big, bright, fuzzy halo of gas and dust around it, that's the coma, and it also has a big fan-shaped tail as well. But this comet is also different, because this one came from a totally different star system in some far-off place in the galaxy. So we are expecting it to be a little weird. But the problem with 3i Atlas is that it keeps doing things that just don't make sense. For example, it's not actually unusual for a comet to turn green. And because this is pretty normal, we know a lot about the chemical process that creates the green color. It happens when carbon molecules in the coma are exposed to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Specifically, this happens to diatomic carbon, or C2, which is just two carbon atoms that are bonded to each other. So if 3i Atlas were a normal comet, it would have a lot of these carbon structures around its surface, and it would turn green in the sunlight. But we know from observations that were made over the summer using pretty much every major telescope in existence, that 3i Atlas is actually deficient in these carbon chain molecules. It doesn't have any C2. And yet it is clearly glowing green. So why is that happening? We don't know. Aliens? Yeah, maybe they just like green lights. Now, we also know that the coma surrounding 3i Atlas is filled with CO2, which is carbon bonded to oxygen atoms, and that is a totally different thing from C2. It does make the object incredibly bright, but that would not turn it green. And the presence of that much CO2 alone is also pretty strange, because it vastly outweighs the amount of H2O, or water vapor, in the coma which is basically the opposite of an average comet because they typically have a lot more water than CO2. Except that's not the only weird thing in the coma of 3i Atlas because it's also full of metal, particularly nickel. And again, this is not exactly unusual for a comet, but it is weird for 3i Atlas to be doing it right now. A lot of comets have metal in their composition and often that metal will end up evaporating out into the coma but this only ever happens when the comet gets incredibly close to the sun, where there's enough heat to vaporize metal. 3i Atlas is not close to the sun, and the presence of nickel was first detected when it was still out in between Mars and Jupiter. So there's no reasonable explanation as to why it's releasing a bunch of metal, specifically nickel, unless you were to entertain the theory that 3i Atlas is an alien spacecraft, in which case, Rocket engines are typically made from metal alloys that are high in nickel content, and when you burn those engines, a lot of nickel tends to end up in the exhaust gas, a lot of CO2 as well. Of course, this probably isn't aliens, but there's also something weird happening with the way that 3i Atlas is moving through the solar system. Probably unrelated to rocket engines that may or may not exist, but what's interesting is the trajectory and velocity of 3i Atlas has remained almost perfectly consistent for the entire time that we've been observing it. 
Since the object was first spotted in early May up until right now in October, it has not sped up, slowed down, or changed direction by any meaningful amount. That might not sound weird, but if this were a comet, then it should be moving around a lot more. You see, comets heat up as they approach the sun, which causes them to melt, or technically to sublimate, which is what happens when a solid transitions directly into a gas. And the release of that gas tends to push the comet around in space, like a thruster. So a typical comet will change velocity and direction depending on what side is being exposed to the sun. We call that movement non-gravitational acceleration, or NGA and we typically measure the average distance of variation that occurs in one day. As we've seen, 3i Atlas has been doing a lot of sublimating already, including a mini tail that formed in the direction of the sun, which has now begun to evolve into a longer tail that is facing away from the sun. And yet, on a daily basis, the velocity and trajectory of 3i Atlas has only fluctuated by about one and a half kilometers of NGA per day. Let's compare that with 2i Borisov, the most normal of the interstellar trio. It was measured to fluctuate over 100 kilometers per day, about 100 times more movement on average than Atlas. Now, one potential explanation would be that Atlas is bigger and therefore harder to move. Makes sense. But we can bring in another point of comparison. This is Hale-Bopp. It's one of the biggest comets we've ever discovered in our solar system, at least as big as 3i Atlas, if not much bigger. We saw Hale-Bopp move around by an average of over 10 kilometers of NGA per day, again, around 10 times more than Atlas. And Oumuamua blows them all away. At some points, it was changing direction by over 1,000 kilometers per day. So even when compared to other interstellar objects, 3i Atlas is moving in a very strange way. It's holding such an unusually steady course that you could almost say it's intentional, as if it's being guided through the solar system. Now, there's probably a natural explanation for that, but let's just say that if 3i Atlas is a ship that is being steered, then not only can it hold a course, but it could, theoretically, also change course whenever it wants. Right now, we expect that 3i Atlas will end up being on the opposite side of the sun from the Earth as it passes through the inner solar system, so we won't have an opportunity to see it up close, or it won't have a chance to see us. Unless, somehow, 3i Atlas is able to slow itself down as it passes by the sun and we find it waiting for us on the other side. Here's a crazy theory for you that might actually hold some water. Have you ever heard of the WOW signal? It was discovered in 1977 by astronomers at Ohio State University who were using something called the Big Ear Radio Telescope. It's like a big ear that listens for weird stuff in space. And on this one day, it found something so weird that the person reading the data just wrote the word, wow, on the paper printout. Hence the name. What shocked them so much was this incredibly powerful narrowband radio signal that lasted for 72 seconds and originated from a point deep in outer space. We know that it didn't come from any of our technology. It didn't come from the sun or any planet in our solar system. We only know that it came from the general direction of the constellation Sagittarius. Now, the first thing that stands out about the WOW signal is the incredible amount of energy it would have required to blast out a narrow band radio frequency across interstellar space. If it was made by aliens, then they would have to be a civilization so advanced that they could harness the energy of a star. Or if it was a natural phenomenon, then it must have been created by some kind of activity inside a star. Now, the second important thing about the WOW signal has to do with hydrogen, which is the most abundant atom in the known universe. And there's this thing called the hydrogen line. It's a radio frequency that gets created by hydrogen atoms. That's a big simplification, but all you need to know is that the frequency of the hydrogen line is 1420 megahertz. And the frequency of the WOW signal, you guessed it, 1420 megahertz. So if you were trying to send a very simple message into the galaxy in a way that any other civilization with advanced knowledge of science would recognize, that's probably how you would do it. 
and in the five decades since then, we have never detected another radio signal that has looked anything like that. Anyway, the reason why this is interesting is because astronomers have been able to reverse engineer the trajectory of 3i Atlas, and we're pretty sure that it also comes from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius, the same general direction of the wow signal. That is a pretty big coincidence, and it's got some people thinking that maybe the real origin of the wow signal wasn't some distant star, but it might have come from our new visitor, 3i Atlas, which in the year 1977 would have been on the outer edge of our solar system, far beyond the orbit of Pluto. Maybe it just wanted to give us a heads up that it was on the way. Of course, that is just a theory, one that hasn't been proven to be true and probably never will be, but it also hasn't been proven to be false either. And that's probably the most important thing to keep in mind as we learn more about 3i Atlas. Objects like this one demand that we keep an open mind to the endless possibilities of the universe. The truth is out there, and it's headed in our direction.